Hello, everybody. Welcome to Drive Time Series 2 and Episode 2 as well. And I am joined by a, no doubt, a familiar face for many of you. He is a, he is a Housewives favourite, isn't he? Of course, uh, up and down the paddock. Rob Lewis is with me. Rob, how are you? I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> with flowing locks like that, Rob, I'll tell you, you are. <laughs> these are, these are, uh, these are post-COVID locks. I think if you go back to Season 1 when I did the first Drive Time interview, I think it was yeah. like the eighth episode in or something, wasn't I? And I had life's flowing locks in, and that was the uh, the current COVID haircut of the time. And it just stayed with. I, I enjoyed having semi-long hair, so it stayed on. Well, you're clearly being promoted then, uh, if you were eighth last time. You're now second this time. There is no pecking order, by the way. It's completely random. It's just uh, <laughs> as things go out. So please don't think, uh, please, if, you're, if you're 50, if it, it's not because, um, you know, it's just... The, the time to, to schedule them. Um, now, Rob, obviously here for drive time, we've got a series of five questions to ask you. We want to know more. Here are the questions, by the way. We're going to touch on it very shortly, but we now want to know more about you. We want to find out what your passion is and most about how you got involved. We've got some, obviously, some thought-provoking questions here to have a bit of a think about. You have had these questions beforehand as well. So everybody taking part in drive time does receive the questions beforehand. It'd be pretty unfair to just dump them on you uh, without any lead in. First question, of course, uh, Rob Lewis. For those who don't know who Rob is, and I can't believe there's many people out there who don't, uh, but Rob <laughs> Lewis, what is your involvement in motorsport? Uh, my involvement in motorsport. So I'm a former podcast host of the Club Racing UK podcast. Um, former, formerly involved with Club Racing UK. I've been racing in Club Racing since 2009. Um, I am currently the pit lane commentator for the Silver Lake C1 Racing Series uh, on the BRSCC package. i am also got another project that's on the way called Icon Road Track and Race, which is going to be a media outlet nice. looking at um, sort of car culture and a bit of... A, We've got a bit of a motorsport flavour in there as well. We're great, great gross motorsport, uh, but we'll, we'll 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 come to that on the final question, I think. But um, yeah, so I'm a bit of a pit lane commentator. I do a bit of YouTube rambling as well. I've just put out some episodes on my YouTube just of me tinkering with my race car, and I'll be vlogging that throughout the year. So to, to put it simply, my involvement in motorsport, I'm a very busy man. You are a very busy man. And talking of uh, obviously racing, you you are a driver, as you mentioned before. Your uh, Ford Focus has been the butt of jokes uh, over the years, which is a bit unfair, really. But <laughs> I've had a rather large splitter on it at times, haven't you? <laughs> we, we did it. No, it, it had a large splitter on it twice, and both times it ended up getting smashed off. But I will absolutely say to this day, it was built to regulations set out by me. But the problem was with the way the colour scheme and the bumper on my car, it looked bigger than it actually was. At least that's what I'm telling people. Um, but yes, it's um, it certainly has been the butt of jokes. But 2022, we did get a couple of good results. We got a couple of trophies behind yeah. me. So you I know, was going to say, un unfairly the butt of jokes as well. Unfairly the butt of jokes. So no yeah. longer, no longer. Uh, that leads us quite well in because you are um, certainly an advocate of club racing in the UK. You know an awful lot about it, of course. So hmm. let, let's talk about the scene heading into 2023. What's the landscape looking like? How strong is the club racing scene in the UK at the minute? Uh. It depends what you mean by strong, because certainly at the moment, club racing is going to, or is certainly starting to feel the effect of a lot of long-term issues that are creeping in. Do we mean grid sizes? Are we obviously talking financial? Are we talking grid sizes? Well, that, well, do you well, think they're going to be on the up? I think there's there's a few. There's financial, there's environmental as well, which a lot of people were probably, they don't want to think about that side of things. Certainly uh, financial as well, because as we, I mean, we said it on the podcast a few years ago, Ian, the cost of racing every year is going up and up and up and up. The circuit hire fees are getting higher. That unfortunately gets passed on to the poor clubs. They're trying to make a good deal for their championships. Everyone wants a piece of the pie or everyone needs a piece of the pie because everyone's got to live. Um, and unfortunately, that that gets passed down to Johnny Club Racer, and that's um, it's it's certainly worrying as well. And you know, in the middle of a cost of living crisis as well, the fuel going up last year, that was quite scary yeah. because of yeah. course that that made a fairly significant bill on your race weekend even bigger. Um, yeah, and that just get into the track, it costs the damn sight more, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Because you know, people factor in, well, it's only 15, 20 minutes around the track. Yeah, but you've got your tow vehicle etc etc cut you know it all builds up so i i hope i mean the the brcc i I've, I've worked with them so 
it's going to be a slightly biased opinion, but I don't care. I mean, they bucked the trend last year and their average grid sizes were up. And I will yeah. sing their praises because they know how to run a race meeting and they know how to look after their 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 people and, and, and their championships that they run. And they do a really good job. Um, but all that being said, the other clubs don't do a bad job. For some reason, the BRFCC bucked the trend and increased their grid sizes and the others started to come down a bit. Um I think 2023 is going to be the year where we start to find out, but then going forward, 2024 is going to be when we really find out where we're at. Well, let me ask you this question, Nick, because I'm, I'm going to swap them around. Uh, I have a particular order, but I'm going to swap them around this okay. time uh, because we're touching on it quite nicely. And I'm talking about motorsport, not at the, the bottom, because I don't like to use that word, <clears throat> at lifeblood, which is club mm -hmm. racing, yeah. right to the very top, the elite level. So we're factoring in everything here. Yeah. How do you think... The landscape in motorsport we're looking five to ten years from from club racing and at the top level well i mentioned i mentioned a couple of minutes ago so we, we talked about the the financial side of it that's going to be significant enough because we can't keep sustaining if the costs keep going up and up and up so that needs everyone to get together motorsport uk needs to do more on certainly on a national level my i believe you know it's it's only my my thoughts i, I think they need to sort of maybe mediate and and just try and stem the tide and, and help out the budget well, club there races. is a monopoly on circuits isn't there there, you know, there is let, let's ignore let's let's not ignore that and not dig anybody out here but no, it no, probably no, doesn't no. help does it because it, it it's either there or it probably does it. it probably doesn't and again it probably doesn't help that certain circuits have certain planning restrictions against them and only certain days they can run and that's really annoying when you think of what motorsport actually brings overall to the economy and what it actually does to the automotive industry you know, you think of any technology that you've got in a road car right now for the past 50 years, guarantee you it was de developed in motorsport. But the problem is a lot of people don't think that. Um, but again, sorry, I digress. There's one thing that we haven't discussed yet. And that's that's it's one thing I actually wrote in an article for Motor Racing UK. And it was when everyone was focusing on the Alfa Romeo that crashed at the first corner at the British Grand Prix, the, the real story I felt was kind of pushed to the side a little bit and everyone had a laugh and a joke about it and kind of went, oh, that was a bit bad. But when the protesters climbed down the hill and then went onto the track, yeah. that sent a shiver down my spine because immediately in my head, I was like, right, the environmental protesters know about motorsport now and they're going to start targeting it. And motorsport in terms of how much carbon it generates, if you really put it up against everything else, it's not a lot. The carbon footprint isn't... Everyone... Th motorsport inherently has an image problem. Um, again, I'll sing the praises of the BRSCC. They've got the new electric yeah. series that's, um, yeah. that's coming out it's this fantastic year. Fantastic as well, doesn't it? Yeah. But, but really, I think what clubs and Motorsport UK as well need to start looking at and investing in is synthetic fuel, because I think that's the future um, with, the, with the occasional electric suits. So there will be some electrification coming in. It's not the build and end, I feel. That's just my opinion. Um, but certainly synthetic fuels, I think, are going to have to be the way forward in five to ten years to to be seen to be cleaner as well as to help sustain it because we're not going to be using fossil fuels forever. So Michael's opinion yesterday on drive time in episode one, very similar, okay. actually. He actually thinks, uh, yes, the EV has a place. However, the development of the internal combustion engine is going to stick around. It's just going to be what we're putting into it is going to change. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Um, and, and let's forget... EV will develop as well. I mean, a lot of people were probably looking at Carl Benz in 1896 or whenever it was in when his first car was around, thinking, what's that Burke doing on that bloody machine there with pram wheels on it and whatever. But, you know, it's 2023 now and the world is built literally around the car. So we can develop. We have the technology, as, as they say. And of course, back to the environmental issue to talk about people coming in. Formula One can help itself. We're in 2023. It's going to be a huge calendar. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't really make sense. I know a lot of teams no. have already complained about flying over to Singapore and then you're back in Europe and then you're over in Australasia and then you're in North America. Why not just have Europe, North America, Australasia, Asia, well, South that America? That would certainly make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. But um, uh, again, this, doesn't it? <laughs> it, 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 comes, it comes down to wedge. Um, but on, on, for, I mean, the landscape in motorsport, there's, there's going to be a lot of factors to it, environmental, financial. Um, how motorsport is viewed again, you know, it, it's um, it kind of ties in with the environmental side. But if motorsport is seen as dirty and stuff like that, you know, a lot of people are going to back away from it. I, I hope that's not the case, but people won't be, I say, back away from it. They won't be as drawn to it 
um, which yeah. I hope that doesn't happen. Well, look, we've touched on uh, club motorsport quite extensively. Yeah. You're a guy, Rob, as we said before, you're a race driver yourself. You're involved in media quite heavily as well. You're involved in all sorts of facets with motorsport. So let us let me ask you this one then. From, from your side of things, looking at the elite level of motorsport here, you've got Formula yeah. 1, you've got Formula E, you've got IndyCar, NASCAR, you've got WRC, you've got um, the World Endurance Championship. There are others, of course. There, there's, a, mm. there's a text, there's a character limit on what I can write in the caption. So if yeah, I've yeah. missed any off, apologies. But which, in your opinion, of the elite level motorsport, offers the best all-round value for fans going to the event, watching it on TV, for sponsors obviously paying to get involved and access to drivers and corporate and what they actually get, and career prospects. People like yourself, Rob, I imagine you wouldn't turn it down if uh, Formula E said, Rob, can you come do some commentary for us in the pit lane? What what offers the best all-round value for somebody involved in motorsport? Uh, well, you say Formula E. I think Formula E, the one thing it's, well, two things it is missing is the sound and the smell, which will have put off a lot of the purists. Um, and of course, a lot of sponsorship in in and around motorsport, the likes of oil companies, and and I don't mean oils as in necessarily fossil fuels, but um, lubrication, stuff like that. They'll want to go where there's internal combustion, where they're, where they're more relevant. So I think Formula E is quite niche. Uh, Formula One, certainly on the sponsorship point of view, it's the drive to survive era now, isn't it? It's the... I, to be honest, I'll be perfectly honest with you, Ian. I've, I stopped watching Formula One. It's um, it's well, no, it's it, it, it's it's turned into a circus, and it's it's one that has taken a great sport. I mean, I I grew up in the be- what I would call one of the best eras, um, V10s, V8s, where privateers were true privateers. You could have your Stuart Grand Prix jump in and Jordan and yeah. and give it a go to the big boys at the front. Um, but now, when they're making up rivalries on bloody Netflix series to try and make it relevant and appeal to a big US audience. I think it just, it's a motor race, you know, it's motor racing. Stop making it a soap opera. The the problem is with Formula One, Rob, I think you said it there, when it comes to value, um, I think the entry point into Formula One 20 years ago was here. Now now it's here. Now now it's Um, it's astronomical. And so unless you're already an established company with, with millions to spend, it's a closed book. Well, it's, maybe, maybe something like I mean, NASCAR really only appeals to a North American market. Same with IndyCar. Yeah, but then so. and again, you say NASCAR, so that you are absolutely correct. It appeals to a North American audience. But if you look at their audience, it is huge. Yeah, it's a um, diehard audience. It's it a is a very, diehard. it's a very diehard audience. I know they're having some problems at the moment with the new generation of car, which I'm sure they'll get over. There's a lot of arguing. They've got the characters as well. They've kept the characters in the sport, which is very important. Yeah. Um, nowadays in F1, if a driver speaks his mind, they'll either make something of it and it'll be, yeah, ha ha, but it's, they've probably got it in the back of their mind, right, he's going to get fine. Um, yeah. And that's that's the problem generally with motorsport nowadays. You've, you've got to keep those characters. Um, but yeah. I mean, for, so, so to answer the question, with we're going around the houses here. I mean, WRC, I'm, again, I'm an old school WRC fan, but I love the fact that there's still manufacturer involvement. The new hybrid cars are still exciting. Doesn't get the media attention, though, does it, like it used no, to? It, no, it doesn't. And I think a bit of that is the fact that WRC used to be on terrestrial TV, um, which it isn't anymore. And as they're doing next year, no Rally GB. Uh, this year, sorry, no Rally GB. So yeah. arguably one of your biggest audiences in rallying, um, yeah. and you're not going there which is, you know, Great Britain and Ireland. It's absurd, absolutely absurd. Um, and that they, they've arguably got some of the best grassroots side of things there as well. So, so it's a lot of endurance sense. championship then with top level drivers, <sighs> long races, great tracks. If I was to if I was to line those up, Formula One will be the best for the sponsor. Career pros, prospects as well. I mean, if, if you're really interested in the industry, I think any of those six if you really work hard and get into the right industry and make the right contacts, I think the companies will do around the houses and yeah. and the supplies they use, you will dip your toe into some of the formulas. So career prospects, if you want it, you'll probably get it if you work hard enough um, and certainly get the opportunities that you can. All round value for fans and sponsors. I mean, NASCAR has got to be up there, even though it is predominantly yeah. North American. IndyCar, from a fan's point of view, the racing is great. Um, they need to go back down to the Gold Coast in Australia as well and do some European rounds like Cart used to. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, Formula One, the Netflix has, has kind of offered it. It's got an offering for the fans, it's got the sponsorship. But if you've uh, got the finances, Formula One. Yeah. If you haven't, 
If you haven't, and you want a um, North American market, go to NASCAR. Go to NASCAR. <laughs> if if you want an Australian market, supercars. I mean, the yeah. bat, you, you know me, Ian. I love my V8s. You know, the Bathurst 1000 to me is still the great race. Yeah. And, and always will be. Um, and if you want a British audience, British touring cars. Or maybe, I, I T, think so. maybe TCR. Well, is an option. I think TCR is kind of in that middle part between the likes of Mini. So you've kind of got your national ladder, which is Mini Challenge, what high spec one make series. TCR is just a little bit above them in terms of a competitive touring car championship that you can take to Europe, etc. Yeah. And then British touring cars is still up there. But again, it's um, you know, it's got the audience, it's got terrestrial TV that's got an offering there. This the question's unique because there's lots of different bits of it. It's like it's a hard question to it's answer. It's very hard. Um, it, it's a collective. Um, it's not for me to answer, but you're giving a great answers on why each one has value. And like, yeah. said, yes, it, it's an almost impossible question to answer. If you were going to put your money somewhere, if I gave you a million quid and said you've got a marketed budget of a million quid, where are you putting it out of those? Oh, mate, what are you doing to me? Um, do you know Bearing what? Mind, it, you wouldn't get a lot for a million quid in Formula One. You wouldn't get a lot. <laughs> you wouldn't, to be fair, you wouldn't get a lot in WEC, but I'm really excited. This new hypercar era that's coming in now, I'm really excited about that because, again, that's brought the manufacturers back into play. And uh, Le Mans this year is going to be a spectacle. And, um, yeah. yeah, we need another World Endurance Championship race at Silverstone because we, we yeah. just do. It's, it's the World Endurance Championship. A lot of teams in motorsport are over here. It, it needs a race here. But, again, I'm a purist. What can I say? You are. You certainly are that. Well, let's come back to you then, Rob, as well. You teed that one up nicely. We, we've covered off club racing very nicely indeed. We've yeah, covered yeah. off the elite level of motorsport. Uh, let's. And we've touched on this a little bit, but let's go into more detail. Uh, what's in store for you in 2023? Um, well, the one thing I didn't mention, because it was said what was my involvement being motorsport, um, th there's going to be a little bit of that going on, but you'll probably get the clue from my jumper. So at Race of Remembrance in 2022, I got approached by Alan Preble of uh, Silver Lake. And he wanted, it basically told me over dinner that he wanted me to go and work for Silver Lake. So as of, um, as of the 16th of January, I am the social media, media and marketing relations manager for Brilliant. Silver Lake. So he, he wants me to go in and, and help the marketing team there with the social media side of things and really build the brand up, um, both to the industry, show the world what Silver Lake is capable of, which is everyone, everyone just thinks, oh, they just, they don't just scrap cars. They have a lot of, um, very unique cars there that they part out. They sell a lot of good, green, environmentally friendly parts, recycle a lot of used parts, and they do have a lot of um, a lot of a lot of contracts, uh, contacts, and contracts with bo local body shops in the industry to um, to recycle old parts for cars. And, and motorsport is going to be a part of that. It's certainly going to be one of the projects we'll we'll, we'll be working on further going into twenty twenty three. But um, so there's a bit of that going on, getting the Silver Lake name out there. And to be honest, Ian, it's it's a complete career change for me. I'm coming from an engineering background and working as an engineer for probably eight, nine years now, probably more than well, that. You've been, you've been involved in this uh, media game in a, for a while now. So I think, well, fine, well. I think it was so uh, I, I think one of the reasons Alan kind of came and had a chat to me was he saw the, gr the, the, the work that I was doing with, with Robin Welsh and Tom Brown, of the C1 racing club. And I would, I want to give a big shout out to them as well because I'll be continuing my work with the C1 Club. So we've got eight fantastic weekends lined up this year, including the only 24-hour race at the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. Um, you know, we've there's so much in the pipeline that we want to do with the club and with the social media of that, getting all of the drivers, teams, people involved. It's a great series. There's some fantastic teams up and down that paddock. Um, some wonderful stories, and we're looking forward to bringing that to you as well. Super um, stuff. Well, I'm, Rob... What, sorry, go ahead. Did you have what, no, something else to well, say? There, there is something else. So it, uh, the other thing that um, I'll also be launching and helping with in my spare time is Icon Road Track and Race. So Paul Harvey, Sam Pierce, Ed Whitehouse, Jason Goddard and myself. So Icon Events is going to be effectively a caffeine and machine of the South long term. That's the long term plan. But the media side of it is is going to be between us. We're going to make some films about certain bits of car culture. So you know, why the WRC was so great in the late 90s, why the Ford Fiesta is and always will be an iconic car and probably one of the first hot hatches uh, anyone would have. And we're also 
So we're making nice, to almost top, going to try and make almost Top Gear style documentary films about things that really get close to home in the automotive world and really tug at the heartstrings of the petrol head out there. And the other thing we're going to do from the motorsport side of things is follow our good friends at Graves Motorsport, who yeah. no no stranger to you, Ian. No, 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 um, not the guys at Graves. Yeah, they've um, a lot they, them. they've got a lot of great things in the pipeline for 2023. Um, we're looking forward to to. We have already actually filmed some bits with them at the Enduro last Enduro KA round last year with some of their mini drivers. Um, we're looking forward to seeing how they progress in whatever championships uh, they they put their hand to this year. But one, one thing's for sure, um, we're, we're going to get the YouTube page live in the next month or so with some top quality videos. And if you can, get yourself onto my YouTube page as well just for just to watch a bloke tinker with a Ford Focus, and I'll also be vlogging. It's, it's good content, Rob. It's all right. I'm mean, sure. It's it, good. It's, it's good. all right. It's, I've only put a couple of videos up so far, but for the rest of the year, I'll basically be vlogging my adventures, either tinkering with the Focus, I'm doing an EcoBoost swap on it, um, and I'm also going to be vlogging the days that I do commentary just to show what goes on in the background when you're doing that sort of thing. I think there's a few people that have asked me if, what goes on so I'm like solid if I vlog it it means people can see what you get up to 100 percent. and it's it's not something that's professionally put together it's me putting it together you know the the Silver Lake stuff will be the professional stuff and I'll put my heart and soul into that the low res rambles and stuff that I put out on my YouTube page is just something to show <laughs> people what I'm up to but I, I can't I'm really looking forward to getting my teeth stuck into as well it's just after you know goings on late last year it's it refocuses my mind and yeah and it, I just I just want to go into this year just headstrong into what I'm really passionate about, which is motorsport, 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 automotive, motorsport, anything with an engine. Hang on, you missed off motorsport there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Rob, right, one final question for you. So, so here he is. Rob, Rob Lewis, everybody. Race driver, media mogul, housewife <laughs> favourite. What does he drink? <laughs> Tea or coffee? What's better? I can do both. Uh, predominantly I'll have coffee, but I can do both. No problem at all. And it's always the same, two sugars and milk. So it's coffee then. Yeah, that's because yeah. that's the right answer. It's coffee, that right? is the right answer, yeah. That's the right answer. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the coffee. Uh, right, Rob, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, everybody watching, please do check out Rob Lewis's uh, YouTube channel. And do keep an eye out for uh, what is going on. You will see him, no doubt, in the paddock with the uh, C1 this season as well. Will do. Uh, Icon Road Track and Race will be out on YouTube in the next couple of weeks as well. Um, and anyone that wants to see what goes on up and down at Silver Lake Automotive Recycling, get yourselves on there as well. So we'll be getting stuck in, that's for sure. A couple of uh, corporate tickets to Eastley would be very nice as well. <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm, not that I'm, mind you, I'll probably be down there in a commentary box soon anyway. So uh, there we go. Um, Rob, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Don't forget, this is Drive Time Series 2. Uh, we did this a couple of years ago during lockdown. We did 50 interviews for anybody involved in motorsport. You don't even have to be involved, just be a fan. We mm -hmm. want to hear from you. We've got some incredible guests coming up. If you like it, you want to play a part on it, please get in touch. Just comment below. We can see the comments. We will pick them up. We'll head over to Live now dot uk uh there is the website fill out the contact form get in touch with us and we'll get you on as well that's it for episode two uh episode three will be out tomorrow at seven o'clock and it's going to be donovan dyer it's going to be an absolute crack rob thank you so much and uh as usual everybody until next time drive safely <laughs>